Hi guys, it's Lucy. This week I wanted to talk about two books that I read recently. The first one is The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls, and then the second one is a collection of short stories, volume three, by Somerset Maugham. So the surprise for me um, came from this book. So I did a book trade with a friend, and this um, she probably picked up at some really uh, at a secondhand bookstore because the price is two twenty five, and I don't think we can get any book at this price um, these days, especially with inflation. Um, this collection of short stories introduced me to an author that I personally have never heard of before, and I and I don't know why because. Um, as I read through each of these stories, so it's a very slim volume, the stories are fairly short. There are about eight in here, and it's a, these are all spy stories. So there is one character that connects them all, but they can all be read separately. Um, it's in the voice of a British spy working during World War I. And this is, these stories are not anecdotal or autobiographical, but the author himself um, when I was so pleasantly surprised by these stories, I, I researched into his life and it turned out that he himself, um, first name Somerset, um, worked as an actual spy for the British intelligence service um, back during World War I. He was stationed in Switzerland and also Russia and after the war he traveled all over the place um, to India, I think uh, they mentioned Pacific and Southeast Asia overall. Um, and apparently, this guy was one of the highest paid authors um, during the 1930s. So somewhat of a celebrity himself. And I did not I did not know any of this. It's just when I read these stories, um, I became more and more engrossed in them. Almost in every single one, somebody dies, um, with the exception being, I think there was one called His Excellency, but that one itself is almost like a 10 minute short film. If someone would do like a film adaptation, it would be like a really intense 10 minutes monologue, gets you on the edge of your seat type of situation. So not any less intense than you know where a murder or a death happens in the other stories what makes it these stories pop is the character analysis and the intensity of all of these thoughts that he puts into characters both women and men of all kinds of nationalities and the way that they're thinking he he builds in the perspective of these various nationalities so it's not like an all all around you know they're all American or they're all British and they're all one-sided they're all multifaceted people and they are extremely memorable and the way that he speaks through them you could really tell that he is someone who understands people or thinks a lot about people um, I will link a interview that I found on YouTube that I really liked. So it was one where it was done in Nice. Um, so he himself is British, but he kind of grew up. Uh, he was born in France, or his his father his father was um, stationed in France, but his parents died when he was only ten, and he was kind of half raised in England and Germany. So. His life is sort of just all over the place too, even though he came from a really distinguished lawyer family, like three of his older brothers were lawyers, but he himself, um, I think, was trained and apprenticed as a doctor. But when his first novel came out, it was so popular that he was able to just quit that job. But I think um, in a short blip in his interview, he mentioned that everything he knows about people and human character um, was condensed in those first couple years of apprenticeship and training at the hospital um, where he was um, where he was a young man before any of his novels came out. Um, I really really recommend this author and he is still very much in print today. Um, his most famous work is Of Human Bondage so I think if I were 
um, to pick something up, it would either be one of the other volumes of short stories or um, that particular novel. So I'm really happy to have came, come across this uh, through a book trade with a friend. And I think um, if you have friends who read, that's a really great idea to uh, expose yourself to some new material. Um, the other book that I finished is The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls. Um, she herself is a writer, journalist, and this book is bio autobiographical um, in a way that the other wasn't. So she talks about her childhood growing up um, with her parents. I want to say hippie parents, but that is such an overgeneralization. This book, sometimes I do this thing where I try to condense down how I feel about one book into one word or one adjective because sometimes it just pops out in my head and this book when I thought about that the word would be bittersweet and it's sweet because of all the things um, of all of, of the love and support in a way that um, her and her siblings received from their parents so you know things like her mom always believing in higher education and supporting them when they said that their dream was to go to New York City to learn art, to go to college. And the fact that, you know, there was no really criticism or um, over micromanagement, you know, that type of that type of thing that is very common in parenting today um, and especially in some cultures. Um, and the fact that, you know, her dad paid for, you know, the last leg of her tuition in crumpled bills that he won from poker tables and, you know, giving them stars and planets as gifts because they will be with them longer than, um, say, you know, just plastic toys made without any sort of um, love or consideration. So little things like that makes this book really sweet and how especially how Jeanette and her siblings stood together always since they were children to you know when Jeanette was offered um, a babysitting job that um, she turned it into a ticket out of this mining town to New York City for her sister so something like that really makes me think there are some sibling relationships that are really worth giving up everything for, like an arm or a leg, because just of that level of support and, um, and family. I think that's what that really, her family um, really resembles that. And the bitter part that really makes this novel a standout in today's society is bringing to light poverty um, in everyday towns in North America when we when we describe you know life in America no one thinks about that level of poverty I think they were growing up perhaps in the 60s um, around around there that timeline it really paints the picture of what people meant when they meant mining towns just the descriptions of houses without you know without water um, and these people living in you could say destitution like they're not, they're not even paycheck to paycheck they're not even on welfare they're they're going hungry and not being able to get out of that as kids themselves because the author herself you know was growing up and describing alcoholism in her parents in her dad describing mental health issues that probably wasn't even recognized i'm pretty sure I'm not a, a specialist in psychology, but I'm. But it sounds like her mom has bipolar disorder and her dad has chronic depression, and these are huge. When like by themselves, but like together, they're in a codependent um, spiral of a relationship that is just unhealthy for all of them. So, her strength of character in witnessing all of this and the way that she's dealing with this with her siblings and you know just, and plus the normal everyday stuff of kids being bullied and growing up and poor really makes this book um a bittersweet read so i really enjoyed this and i think 
um, I'm interested in one of her other books where she describes um, the life in novel format of her grandma. So the book is called, called Half Broke Horses. And her grandma, this picture here, uh, seemed to have led a really amazing life um, as a wife of a rancher. And before that, a whole bunch of other things that I think is just one of those legendary lives that cannot, or very, that's very hard to replicate today. So I'm kind of looking forward to that as well. Hope you're enjoying your week and leave me a comment if you've read any of these books or if you're interested in some of these authors that I talked about. I would love to hear from you.